Good morning and also a very warm welcome. Your Excellency, uh, Abdullah Asubal, uh, it's a great pleasure to have you. You have been driving the digitization of the uh, kingdom, the society and the economy over the last years with great success. Now comes new great opportunities with AI, but also new challenges. How do you deal with that uh, in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia? Thank you, Dr. Hans. Let me start off by giving a big congratulations to His Excellency Abdullah Sharaf and to the Sadaya team. This is the third AI summit, and under the leadership of His Royal Highness and the dream team led by His Excellency Abdullah Sharaf, they're, they're astonishing us every year. So let's take a step back, Dr. Hans. The state of AI globally, before we talk locally. Currently, there's a technological hype cycle. So if you remember from your BCG days, you had the technological curve. I, I prefer the hype cycle of Gardner, excuse <laughs> me for that. There are five stages to any technological change. First of all, an innovation trigger takes place, an aha moment. So for example, in the context of AI, it was open AI stumbling across the transformer model with reinforced learning and human feedback to launch open AI and chat GBT that we use today. Then we go to the peak of inflated expectations. This is where we are. There's a lot of overhype and we have to move through the trough of disillusionment to the slope of enlightenment and productivity. And the investment thesis for the kingdom in collaboration with you, our global and local and regional innovators, is how we can shift from that peak of inflated expectations to realize Thanks. that plateau of productivity for the people, planet, and prosperity. Let's talk about some of the unclogs that we have to do. And I like to use parallels. Cloud computing, the innovation trigger 2006, 2013, there were some challenges around hardware, energy, and cost. The unlocks took place from a $10 billion business to a half a trillion dollar market. What needs to happen in AI? We have three fundamental challenges in three buckets. You spoke about challenges, Dr. Hans. The first one has to do with hardware and energy efficiency. And I always tell folks, you all have to become overnight a pseudo neuroscientist to appreciate artificial intelligence. So let's look at the human brain. 100 billion neurons, more than 100 trillion connections that only consumes 20 watts, enough to power up that light bulb ahead, you know, on the ceiling. <laughs> when it comes to artificial intelligence, to mimic that, there's a lot of inefficiencies. Let's say we want to build a data center for one megawatt. 100 megawatts, even a gigawatt, 14% will go into cooling and will just do translation from high voltage all the way to low voltage. So 14% will go away. So from 100 megawatts, that's 14% gone to cooling and to translation. Then 50% will be gone to networking and to storage. So effectively, for every megawatt, only half a megawatt goes to those GPUs. So that's the level of inefficiency. And I will tell you what we're doing to solve that. The second problem statement is memory. There are three archetypes today in AI. Let's talk about the human brain. If you want to remember a book that you have memorized, you would access it from memory. If it's on the shelf, you need some latency, some time to grab that piece of information. And if it's in the library, you have to drive to that library. With AI, there are three models. Memory on the chip, and that's the work that we're doing with Grok on language processing units, LPUs. There's memory next to the chip, and today we're making a major announcement with Qualcomm, Aramco, and Alat joining hands to launch one of the most revolutionary AI acceleration cards leveraging NPUs where memory sits next to the chip such that you can not only realize the speed, but you can do multimodality. And third, where memory sits afar from the chip, this is the NVIDIA work that we're doing with high bandwidth memory. So that's with energy and hardware. Let's move to the models. The models, there's a lot of challenges there. And I shared it in the last WEF session. Predominantly around misinformation, hallucination, and bias. And just to repeat, Humans, we have something called constraint hallucination. 
called creativity, called memory, called vivid dreaming. For the machine, that seems to be a big issue. And we're working with the likes of Victara, Dr. Amr Awadallah, who's one of the famous Saudi scientists that we're very proud of. He's working on hallucination engines to tackle these problems. Other challenges with regards to the models is there isn't, Dr. Hans, enough data in the world. So there's two ways to do it. Either you expand your global network of how you can tap into these data sources, or you start working with synthetic data, and that can be very problematic for us when we achieve AGI and you know, ASI. In the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, nobody has the Arabic heritage that we have. So it's only natural for the heart of the Arab and the Muslim world to launch led by Sadaya Alam, the most accurate Arabic LLM model according to the MMLU. They surpass even the leading models. Fast forward to the adoption. And if in case of adoption and use cases, nobody comes close to the work that Aramco is doing on how we are taking the industrialization of this AI in their methane management solutions, the cleanest upstream and downstream activities and proliferation of these technologies. So this is a call to action. If you're looking for a partner to join hands with you, to be able to move from this peak of inflated and expectations all the way to the plateau of productivity, the kingdom is your partner of choice for the people, planet, and prosperity. Well, obviously, thank you. This is all the amazing work of the amazing obviously, team here. Obviously, you are already deep into the challenges and the opportunities. Um, and, um, but, you know, one of the key elements, and you already uh, talked about hallucinations and other uh, issues, how do you uh, create the real governance to make that work and to uh, effectively I think constrain the challenges um, and some of the misuse that could and is happening. Dr. Hans, we have to innovate and regulate, and more or less, we have to do even innovative regulation. Let's look at cloud. In the early days, we had to launch a cloud-first policy, so we had to push the adoption. And then as we have achieved maturity in terms of cybersecurity, multi-cloud models for sovereign instances and public instances, the market picked up and became a half a trillion dollar market. The same has to happen with AI. And right now we are in the early days, we're really on the data level, layer, you have to govern it. And so Daya has done a fantastic job with the privacy laws that we have launched. And we have reformed them in collaboration with you collectively from West and East. On the higher level, you have to go to a risk-based assessment. I shared this last time, Dr. Hans. We had a famous entrepreneur and an innovator called Dr. Ali Al Hassan. He devoted his life with Nano Palm to tackle sickle cell disease, a disease that impacts 20 million people around the world that causes losses of limbs and lives. And through generative AI, he correlated proteins and enzymes to accelerate drug formulation. Typically, it takes five to 10 years. He has done it in 18 months. But when it comes to the risk-based assessment, we can't skip the line when it comes to trials. So as we speak, there are 15 patients in the National Guard Hospital today where they have to go through a one to two years phase one testing for toxicity and side effects, phase two for efficacy. So there are no shortcuts when it comes to humans and to a risk-based assessment. And this is why we're very proud within this AI summit, and Dr. Abdullah have announced it, we're partnering with UNESCO on ethics and research. We're partnering with ITU on the AI framework. And let's not forget, the kingdom as a G20 nation in the toughest year for humanity under the leadership of His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman, we pushed 75% of humanity to drive consensus on agreeing on the OECD principles for trustworthy AI how we can have transparency, accountability, robustness, safety, and security into these models in a human-centric fashion. Good. So maybe a last message to uh, the audience here and around the world who are watching online. What would you encourage people to do? I'm going to have to repeat myself because we are on the now, next, never type of session. So I have to make sure that my message is clear. In the first AI summit, we said 
that those who use AI will compete with those that don't. In the last, we said it's going to augment. This time I can say it with high certainty and let me reiterate it for those young leaders and amazing women. And we have a huge celebration on achieving the highest women empowerment in tech and in AI in the world with 35%. This is a key message to all of you. Please keep pushing because those of you that will lead with AI will definitely disrupt those that don't. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.